So the question is, uh, why there is life after life? I can only tell what is their wife after wife. <laughs> when I went to America the first time, there was a shock for me. So there was a, a meeting and the meeting, uh, one person uh, got angry because some things are not happening and he started, went and started banging his head against the wall and blood started coming out of his head. I was shocked. Somebody in an official meeting going and banging his head against the wall. Then somebody told me, don't do don't do this thing, he is uh, tensed up. This is his uh, eighth divorce. Okay. He is an international salesman and every time he goes to outside country, a month, month and a half he has to stay outside and every time he comes back, they say divorce. And he has gone through eighth divorce and eighth marriage. Uh, and uh, that's why he is frustrated. Don't worry about this, has nothing to do with the office. So, why we keep doing something again and again? This is the question. Right? Forget about life after life. Why we do something again and again? We do something again and again if we are not satisfied with what we do. We are not satisfied with the, what we got. Right? So then we try to repeat it. That's one way. Or, if we are totally dissatisfied with what we got, we don't repeat. We will try to some, do something else. Correct? So life is such that we are neither totally dissatisfied nor we are satisfied. We are always in hope something better will come in life. <laughs> okay? What is the hope? Life, general direction of life is uh, I want to get happiness in life. Eternal happiness. Eternal joy. The life is designed in such a way that you will never become hopeless. Always there is a temptation. <laughs> okay? You do something, you will get some happiness. Okay, now you are motivated, okay, I will do something. Then again unhappiness will come. Then you say, you have hopes, or oh, something better will come. The happiness and unhappiness is cyclical in nature. Is there are two sides of the coin. You will not get one independent of other. If you seek happiness, unhappiness will come. You say, I will become happy if I get a job. Okay. Immediately you will get, get a job and immediately you will become unhappy because you are looking for a promotion. So you got a promotion, you will be unhappy because somebody else got a better increment than you. So like that, life is always a mix of happiness and unhappiness. It never comes independently. Okay. But deep inside we have hope that I will get happiness only. I will keep searching for happiness and I will keep doing something for happiness. And what kind of happiness we want? We want a permanent happiness which is eternal happiness. We don't want any suffering. That's our uh, the hidden desire. The life will not satisfy that. Okay? We keep on trying. We try infinite number of finite things to get happiness. The law of nature is that an infinite number of finite things will not make it infinity. And every time we do something, you will get unhappiness. So, in a sense, life is an unfulfilled, unfulfilled journey. Then it is unfulfilled, what do you do? You take another lifetime to fulfill it. Now who takes that another lifetime? It is not the self, Atma. Atma is always, Atma is infinity and Atma cannot do a journey because it is infinite, infinite. It is a mind which moves from one body to other. The mind is powered by the self, powered. Like electricity powers the bulb, mind is powered by the self. The powering of the mind is called Chidavasa or that's what we call as individual self. Individual self is not real self, it is only reflection in the mind, powered by the, powered by the consciousness. Now this mind moves from one body to other. Then what is birth and death? Birth is the connection of the mind with the body is called birth, disconnection of the mind with the body is called death. Okay. There is no real birth and death because body is anyway dead matter actually. Body is not really conscious. Body is nothing but material. So what is the point of saying body is, body has death? There is nothing. Body became enli body body became en enlivened because of the mind. Mind got enlivened because of the consciousness. So the mind keeps on taking newer and newer bodies because newer and newer bodies because mind is never satisfied. And this journey will keep continuing until you come to a point where you understand you are frustrated by this whole journey of seeking happiness by doing something. Then you start inquiring into the nature of mind and go deeper within the self, mind. 
then you recognize the root of the mind is called I thought and we enquire into the I thought you find that there is no I thought so then you are establishing yourself so that art actually is the fulfillment of life the fulfillment that is actually depth of the mind also because mind is based on the I thought so that in the sense not a physical death the mind the root ignorance in the mind is gone and once the root ignorance of the mind is gone, this is a death of the mind, practically. Mind is based on the illusions. Mind is based on, always based on the assumptions. That assumption is gone, mind is dead. So there are many, many lifetimes of birth and death, not for the self, not for the body, for the mind. Associated with the body and dissociated with the body. So only with dhana, with wisdom or enlightenment, mind dies finally. Because the permanent affairs the eternal happiness is nothing but your self only. The self nature is recognized. Others, mind is a shadow, mind is overshadowing the self. Mind is covering the self. It's like clouds covering the sun. And the clouds disperse, sun is there. So, for eventual death of the mind, or uh, eventual removal of the ignorance from the mind is called Manonasha. Or that's called enlightenment. So, after that, there's no birth and death because the self is never born, never dying. Is the answer clear? Yeah. So when Gita, Lord Krishna says that Vasan se jitna hi yatha bhi hai. Yes. He says about this cloth, uh, or this body shedding the soul, which is no, no, body doesn't shed the soul. Soul sheds the body. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vasan se jitna hi yatha bhi hai. Actually, when they when they use the word soul. The, the word, the Sanskrit usage of Sanskrit is a very peculiar usage. Yeah. When you use the Atma, first you say the body and body is Atma. Oh. Then you say this uh, mind, you say mind is Atma. Oh, okay, okay. okay, it's as good as saying, uh, have you seen a fresh coconut taken from the tree? Coconut tree? Mm. How does it look like? This yeah, husk. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Thick husk. Yeah. Is that coconut? No. Is the coconut, no? I mean, the inside, yeah. People, people call it as yeah, coconut, yeah. right? Remove the husk, there is a hard shell. What is it called? Coconut. Remove the hard shell and inside the kernel is a white kernel is there. Coconut. So which is coconut really? With the one with the husk or one with the hard shell or with the white kernel? Real coconut is a white kernel. There is a core. Yeah. But when you show from outside, you show the husk as coconut. Then you show shell as the coconut and the inside kernel as the coconut, right? Similarly, chocolate. This is chocolate, you say. No, no, there is a wrapper. Around the wrapper, also it's called chocolate. Remove the wrapper, there is a chocolate. Okay. So in Bhagavad Gita, when the Atma is used, first is body level, it's Atma. Because it's pointed to innermost core, which is Atma. So then body is gone. Then the mind is there. Okay, mind is also called Atma, the self. Okay. So when the mind is removed, what remains is the self. The innermost core. So that's why the scriptures have a lot of multi-levels of meaning. Yeah. Okay. If you don't understand multi-level meaning, you'll get confused. Yeah. Are you clear? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you.